It's all about using imagery to get people to feel a certain way and also to distract them from the real issues. This is, is the Kevin Trudeau Show. I am exposing the corruption in government and in major multinational corporations. We're telling you the things that they don't want you to know that will make your life better. The image makers are controlling you every single day. These are the actual conversations that they have. When you look at the pictures, so the reason why I'm saying this, by the way, is I want you to now going forward. I'm empowering you. I'm revealing how the magic trick is done. Once I tell you how the magic trick is done, you come out of your trance and it no longer has effect on you. Yes, it still has effect because resistance is actually futile. But if you actually raise your consciousness and awareness, you can come out of this trance. So when you look at the news, look, if you get your phone, whatever, and you start looking at Google News, Apple News, Newsmax, what, what are some of the other news agencies that people catch catch their news on when they go on their phone? MSNBC would be one. MSNBC, ABC. CNN, Fox, yeah. the major news ones, right? Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people catch their news from these agencies on, on their phone. Some people still read a newspaper or a magazine. Some people still watch the news on television. Look at the images that those agencies are showing you. Now, if you look at the most left-wing agency, it's probably MSNBC. And if you look at the most right-wing, it's Fox. Look at the images of Donald Trump on MSNBC and look at the images on Donald Trump, of Donald Trump, on Fox. It's night and day because Fox is trying to produce some positive images of Trump and MSNBC is trying to produce negative images of Trump. Think about it. This is how you're being manipulated. They do the same thing with the war in, um, in Ukraine. Look at the images they're selecting. The same thing with the war that's going on in Israel and Gaza and the Palestinians. Horrible, horrible. The human suffering is horrific. And everybody is suffering. The Israelis are suffering. The Palestinians are overwhelmingly suffering at this point. Nobody can deny that. And then we have Hezbollah. The people in Lebanon are suffering. This is, a, this is where's the compassion? Choose love. So we love them. We love them. Well, even if they're suffering, we still have to love everyone. But look at the images that are being selected and ask yourself, why did somebody select this image? What are they trying to make me feel and think? This is how you can come out of your trance. If you realize that you are being controlled and manipulated by the image makers, when you realize that, then you can take control of your life and you will no longer be manipulated or controlled by those parasitical elites that want to keep you a slave. Here's more proof. Article. New January 6th footage reveals Pelosi's focus on Trump in hours after the insurrection. The morning after January 6th, which is when the Capitol was attacked, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was clear. She wanted the attention to be on getting Donald Trump out of office. Now this is significant because you are going to see behind the curtain. I have been behind the curtain. I have been in these rooms. I have been in the back seat of cars where these conversations go on. I know. And now we have the actual evidence on video. While in the car on her way to the Capitol, Pelosi's senior advisor, Drew Hamill, or Hamill, 
was reading the speaker a draft of Pelosi's opening remarks. In other words, Pelosi doesn't even write what she says. It's written for her. That's the first thing that should make you go, huh? So when I'm watching politicians speak, are you telling me that they're just reading a script that was handed to them? Yes, they didn't write it. So Pelosi on her way to the Capitol is in the car. Her senior advisor calls her and reads to Pelosi the script that she's going to read as her opening remarks. And you can hear it in the video because he's reading it over the phone. And she has a speaker run, speakerphone. The remarks that Pelosi is supposed to read includes a call for the resignation of the Capitol Police Chief. Pelosi stops her senior advisor. Pelosi says, quote, I think our focus has to be on Trump. Let's not divert ourselves. This goes on and on and on. So let me paraphrase it. Somebody writes the remarks for politicians. They read the script. The remarks were that Pelosi was to be outraged at the chief of the Capitol Police Department for letting this happen, which is true. The guy who is in responsible is the chief of police. Police. He was the one in charge of security for the Capitol. He's Capitol Police Chief. It was his watch. It was 100% his responsibility. The fact that there was a outrageous demonstration and people breached security at the Capitol, there's one person alone who was responsible for the security of the Capitol, and that's the police chief. So her remarks were to call for his resignation, which is insane. Because in government, you can't fire anybody. They just get reassigned. All the Secret Service guys who botched the job on the Trump uh, assassination attempt, nobody gets fired. They get reassigned. If that was in real life, they get fired. But in the government, you can't fire anybody. They can be completely dumb, stupid, and incompetent, but nobody gets fired. We don't want to hurt their feelings. Just let the guy get assassinated. Be completely incompetent. Don't do your job. Be lazy. Have sex with prostitutes. Do all these things. Nobody gets fired in the Secret Service. They get reassigned. So you can't fight. If, if, you, if, 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 if my head of security, when I do a speech, I hire somebody and say, you're the head of security. Your job is to make sure that my area, my hotel suite, the green room behind the stage is secure and nobody breaches this. That is your job. Yes, sir, Mr. Trudeau. You don't have to salute me. This is not the military. Yes, sir, Mr. Trudeau. Well, don't give me a thumbs up either. That's kind of goofy. Yes, sir, Mr. Trudeau. That's better. I'm the head of security. Nobody will breach the perimeter. Thank you. And if somebody breaches the perimeter and comes into my green room asking for an autograph, guess what I do? I call the head of security and I say, you're fired because you didn't do your job. How did that guy get in? I don't, I don't know. Okay, well, you didn't do your job. Not only are you fired, I'm not going to pay you. That's what you do. So this guy, who's the chief of police for security of the Capitol, he fails. He doesn't do his job. They breach security. So Pelosi is going to ask for his resignation. He should have been fired. But Pelosi doesn't want that. She's an image maker and a professional image maker. And I applaud her. Nancy, I've never met you. I disagree with many of your policies. But I applaud you for your political brilliance throughout your entire career. You are a master politician. And I respect and admire you for that. You are a master at manipulating images and manipulating and controlling people's thoughts and feelings. An absolute master. 
and I would encourage you to write a book on how you did it and how you do it and teach others that skill and art as well. But I know you won't because you want to keep it a secret. But she's in the back, and this is all on tape, and she basically says, no, I don't want to mention the chief of police. I want to blame it on Trump. It's all about creating an image that Trump was the problem. Why? Because she knows Trump is going to fight the election results. I don't want to give misinformation. She knows that Trump is going to fight the results of that election. And if he doesn't win his fight, he will run for president again. So she wants to right now try to destroy him and link him 100% to January 6th. She has a clear plan. I need to make the January 6th demonstration for which there were a few idiots who broke into the Capitol and I want to turn it and I'm going to call it an insurrection. And I'm going to put Trump as the leader of this insurrection. That's what she says on the phone. Because she's creating an image and she wants particular photos. She wants particular video footage used to create this image. It's all about using imagery to get people to feel a certain way and also to distract them from the real issues. We have around the world elections between this guy and this person, this woman against that woman, this woman against that guy. It doesn't matter. One person against another, one party against another. If you notice, the discussions are always about insane, irrelevant, immaterial subjects. Nobody discusses the real subjects. If I was questioning the presidents in a debate, I wouldn't say, what do you feel about so-and-so's personal attacks against women? That has nothing to do with running president. He may be a jerk. That's fine. The questions are, what policies are you going to implement and how are those policies going to improve the standard of living and quality of life for citizens of the country you want to become president of? That's the first series of questions. And the second one is, how do you plan on implementing those? Those may be great ideas, but how do you think you can actually get those goals accomplished? Because maybe you have the great idea but you're terrible at politics and can't actually get it accomplished. So there's only two elements that you want to discuss with the candidates and decide who you're going to vote for. What are your policies? How are those policies going to impact me and change or affect my life? And how is it going to make my life better? How is it going to improve the quality of my life and this my own standard of living? And then how are you going to implement that or try to implement that? so that it actually will happen. And it's not just a good campaign speech. People, re people forget George Bush. He was given a script and he loved the line. And they said, yes, this is gonna be our line. Read my lips, no new taxes. And there was one time, the first time he said it, he, his advisors reported that President Bush was skeptical about this line. He goes, it sounds too hokey. Read my lips, no new taxes. And after a long discussion, they convinced him to try it. And he did it very begrudgingly. So he's on his first campaign and he gets to that line in the teleprompter because he's just reading what they wrote for him. And it said, and read my lips. No new taxes, and everybody goes crazy. Yeah! 
And all of a sudden, he looks up and goes, Yeah, I like that line. And then every speech year after, when he gets to it, he puts a big smile on his face. And read my lips. No new taxes. Yeah. And he looks around to his advisors going, yeah, it worked. They, they, they These stupid people love that. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to. We have no intent of of, of keeping taxes the way, of course we're gonna raise taxes. But they love the line. Hi, I'm Kevin Trudeau. This is everything they don't want you to know about to improve the quality of your life. Broadcasting every Monday and Wednesday, two days a week now, Monday and Wednesday at one o'clock Chicago time. Make sure you tune in and subscribe to the channel and share these shows with everyone you know.